are going to be doing a Sesame Street saxophone. So I've actually done one of these before and they are quite, um, quite musical. So you actually have two options here. So the first one will give you these really long songs. And then they're more elaborate. And if you switch it to the one musical note, you just kind of get little sections of that. So they are really, really cool. And they're pretty simple bends. So the first thing we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna go ahead and take out all of these screws on the side here. So let's get at it. this and we're going to open it as much as we can then I'm going to do this we're going to move it out a bit and I'm just going to very lightly, gently pry it up you can see it's kind of coming apart and then you also may have caught on that I actually took the battery cover off when I was having trouble opening this up because a lot of times they'll actually put Screw. I shouldn't say a lot of times. Sometimes when you're having trouble, it's worth checking to see if there's a screw underneath of the battery. Because there are times that that does happen. Looks like we're making some progress here. I don't remember having this much trouble with the last one. Okay, keep this method trying it. Almost convinced there's another bolt somewhere here. I'm gonna go ahead and check. The good thing is that I actually did a vlog on this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and check on the vlog and see if there was another screw or anything. Give me one second. So it seems that there are no more bolts. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with this, but what I like to do in this type of circumstance is I like to take out anything that I can possibly take out that might help us get it open. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out right here. So this is our speaker. We can actually pull that out. I'm going to disconnect the tape just for now. Give this wire a little more work for it. Rip out. Take that inside just so I don't need it. This also may help you see. So if you are right here, you can see that there's not really anything holding this. It's kind of, kind of strange. here and try to do the same thing. Now I'm just going to pull this apart and I'm going to try to pull this out as well. And again, if you're using a flathead, uh, just be very 
fragile with it, I guess. So you don't want to tear these sides up. Okay, there we go. So that's out as well. Now we can probably work our way down here. See, that gives us two pry points right there. It almost looks like, you can see here when I pull on this, it almost looks like it's combined in some way. It's very strange. I'm not sure if the last one just came out a lot easier and wasn't bind, or, or just wasn't binded, I don't know. But I'm gonna grab a razor blade and then see if we can kind of, kind of undo that, because, oh, you know what? It isn't even connected, so that's, that's good, but. Definitely looks like that's what's holding it. It's very strange. So unfortunately, I can't just stick a screwdriver in there and pry it up because our circuit board actually lays right inside of here. And then there's a circuit board laying down and there's a circuit board along these buttons. So both of those are pretty bad when it comes to sticking anything in here and prying it because they will break. So really we're just trying to wiggle this through and hopefully get it undone. All right, I'm gonna keep flexing the plastic just like this. And then I'm hoping that it's gonna give us more room to at least see what's going on, or it's gonna come out. So we're still working on this, and I actually tried to pry this up. So what it is, is it is a piece about right here that goes down, and then it looks a lot like your normal pieces right here where the screw goes in, but there is no screw. And I don't know if this sucker is glued in here or what the deal is, but I was prying on it trying to get it up. Unfortunately, we have a fraction crack right here. Uh, so at this point, really our only option is to go in here with a flathead. I can't think of anything else. I tried squeezing some wire cutters in there, and I just can't get the wire cutters in because it's between two circuit boards. So this was not the best design for any type of circuit bending or repair. So we're just going to try to pry this up at this point and hopefully not do too much damage to it. It is finally open, so it looks like the buttons went flying everywhere, but luckily we do have that on video, uh, so we know where the buttons are going to go and everything, but wow, that was insane. So they literally have a metal bar through here, which for some reason the other one came right off when I was circuit bending this before, and it was not an issue, but this one just would not come off. So we are going to remove this metal bar. Yeah, that caused some problems. And our damage isn't too bad to the instrument. It is, you know, it is present, but I think at the same time we can 
go over that and make it look a whole lot better with some paint. Maybe sand it down a bit. But the first thing we're gonna add is we're gonna be adding a toggle on and off switch because these things do not have on and off switches at all. Over here, we have this switch, but this literally just changes mode. The on and off switch isn't present on this instrument. So we are gonna remove all three of these wires right here, and we're actually gonna feed that. Actually, we might, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and remove all three of these wires, and that's gonna be our on and off switch. which is the reason why we can't fry. So if you look, everything is lower than this circuit board, and then we have this other circuit board that's actually stacked here to the side. So if we would have stuck a screwdriver in there, we would have put a lot of force on that, and we probably wouldn't even have been able to make it to this without frying that way up anyway. And by that, you're angling it like this, and you're more than likely gonna break the board. So, good thing we didn't do that, but we're gonna leave this completely untouched, because we don't really have a reason to all of these are just button pads. And then you have your switch up here. So this is the circuit board we're gonna be messing with right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Take advantage of our new on and off switch. And overall, this is a pretty simplistic instrument. I'm surprised how much trouble it actually gave us at the beginning. But overall, it is a pretty easy instrument and a pretty beneficial one. I mean, it's pretty musical for how small it is, and if I remember correctly, it has some really good tone to it. it looks like looks like this one is just overly protected today. So we have four bolts for this very, very small circuit board. Flip it back on, test our bend. Play it again, everybody dance. Now, just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and guess where this is gonna be. So if you remember, I said that R2 and R1 are normally the ones that you're gonna be dealing with when it comes to circuit bending. So it looks like we have R3 right here, R2 over here, and that to me looks like an R7, not an R1. And our R1 is right here. So we have R2 and R1 and then R3. So let's go ahead and see which one of these. Play it again, everybody dance. Play it again, everybody dance. Let's play it again. So we know it's in this vicinity right here, but it's, it's very hard to tell because all these resistors are bunched up right here. So. so the reason I'm bare wired is I'm hoping to actually come across a point that's gonna give us our high tone effect without a resistor. I don't remember if this needs a resistor or not, so that may be wishful thinking. All right, let's just go over here. Out of curiosity. It doesn't seem like 
it's R2. Everybody One thing we could also do is go ahead and see this over here and touch the point. Alright, so it looks like I'm going to need a resistor to more precisely figure out where our bend is on this. I love charades. Let's see. First word. Me. No. You. Uh, your. Your. First word is your. Uh, your leg. My leg. St standing? Standing in something. Uh, uh, third word. I. Sounds like I. Body. Shot. Sky. My. 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 Third word is my. Fourth word. Uh, eating. Food. Food. You're standing in, uh, my food. You're standing in my food. I got it! That was great! Now it's my turn. This is a movie title, okay? Five words. So, we found the resistor, and it is this one right here. So, what I'm using right here is a 39K. So, I played around with quite a few different resistors, and a lot of them crashed it, but this 39K is working great. So, then you flip this over, it's these two points right here. We're gonna flip that over. Maybe the other way. And you see, that's this one right here. So that is our R1 that we're shorting out right there. So it appears our advice still holds true. R1 or R2 are usually the ones you're dealing with. So let's go ahead and solder on and let's get to it. Instead of actually soldering down here on this ground, I actually ran all three wires out from the circuit board. The reason I did that is because I'm dealing with ribbon wire right here and I just think it'll look a lot neater if we have it sitting like this with the three wires hanging out as opposed to one wire coming over here and running over. So just for fun we went ahead and went through all of this so you see this wire, it is between these transistors right here but it's not actually attached to them. Um, I'm not going to pull it out, but you can see it's not really attached, and it runs into right here. So, this appears to be our medium, this black one. We're going to go ahead and put that one on the switch. So actually, before adding this on the switch, um, I need to check where the resistor needs to go. So the resistor could be on this... Uh, high point right here and that'll keep the instrument from crashing or it could be in the middle and that will actually in turn Limit it from both the ground and the high point. So we're going to check its effect on the ground Everybody. So you can hear it kind of creeping it's it's almost a dead stop But it is creeping a bit So that to me seems like a very, very reasonable low speed. I'm not really going to push for a dead stop because that is super, super close to it. So we're going to go ahead and add this resistor right on the middle right here. Actually, I'm going to add it onto the other side of the switch just to make it look a bit neater.
touch points are going to be a bit different because normally you'd add them after the resistor but I'm afraid that if I add them post resistor then we're not going to have a good range on the touch points due to the internal resistance build up inside of a person's body when they actually touch the touch points. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this pre-switch and I'm hoping to not have to have a resistor on this uh, main one but we're going to go ahead and run this pre-switch we're going to run it out and then we're going to run it from these two and then these are going to be our three touch points. So you have positive, negative, and then you have your median pre-switched and pre-resistor. And hopefully that's going to give us enough range where the touch points are pretty fun, but they're not going to be crashing. Us. out and then see if the internal resistance is enough to actually keep this from crashing and I'm just gonna do that by wrapping this around and we're not soldering just yet but I'm just wrapping it around these bolts right here and these are gold bolts so they are gonna be lower in resistance than silver I've never seen a difference as far as like circuit bending or anything like that I've never seen a difference between them but Theoretically, they are lower in resistance. Just go ahead and connect them. Play it again, Okay, so that's where it's open. So it seems that these are stable enough to actually hook up as is without needing this resistor on it. So we're going to go ahead and drill these out and add the touch points in. we need to add are LEDs and pro sounds. So I was playing around with the color changing LED and I found this right here. So the LED's on. It seems all the bunk buttons are functioning with us. And we're getting this really sci-fi type sound that's pretty loud. So this is a fast color changing LED. It's pretty wicked looking has a lot of different color range with this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this in as a optional thing. So we're gonna add a toggle switch onto this. That way we can get that sci-fi sound anytime we want.
we are adding in the pro sound, which is these two wires right here. So we've got this easy wire to solder right beside this button. And then it looks like the second one is actually gonna be running out to our positive over here, which is inevitably on this switch. So that's kind of interesting, but we're gonna go ahead and solder onto that as well. So we have the switch, and then we have this button right here. this far into the video, I am going to share a secret with you. And I think the secret would be easier to explain if I differentiate between false loops and actual, I guess, true loops. So a true loop on a circuit bit instrument is when you plug up two points and then the instrument starts looping itself. So that I would consider to be a true loop in circuit bending. But there is actually a way, and I haven't seen too many people do this. Obviously, I'm not looking into other people's circuit instruments, but I've never seen a tutorial or anybody talk about this online. But there is actually a way to false loop the instrument. So what false loops are is essentially using another component to go ahead and loop the instrument for you. And it's going to be exactly the same as a true loop, but it's going to be less detrimental to the instrument's life. And it's obviously not gonna be something that all circuit benders are gonna come across when they go in there, if any of them do. And how you false a loop is you take a capacitor, and this is something I've been doing for some time. I've done it on a couple different instruments. And we're gonna be plugging this up. And as you see, you can take just about any point that reacts and we're going to be plugging into the button. So our buttons run out of here. So we have like one, two, three, four. So those are our four buttons that are all on the side. And I can take this and I can go ahead and just plug up to any of the buttons. And this capacitor, what it's doing is it's charging up and then discharging into the button. And what that is, is it's sending a signal to the instrument that somebody is pressing that button repeatedly. And then you can do this on all the buttons. So you're telling the instrument that somebody's over there pressing the button, you know, as many times as the uh, microfarads on the capacitor allow it to. And what I mean by that is you can actually affect how fast that loop is by changing the capacitor that you're using. So a larger microfarad capacitor would be more spaced out, whereas a smaller wouldn't or would actually be faster. So what I'm using right here is a 10 microfarad, and it's a 50 volt capacitor. So really, really easy. Just any electronic store, which if they still exist, um, we'll carry them. But I get these online, and I actually have a set a while ago just from the electronic learning set that I still use to this day. So that's how you add false loops. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to solder onto these four points and then we're going to solder switches onto all of those and then we're going to run all the loops off of this one capacitor.
soldered in. And as you can see, the loop switch is working. And it actually changes on timing. Ooh, this is interesting. I don't know what in the world that was, but that was rather cool. So it seems I misspoke when I said that this is going to actually give us access to all four different buttons that are up here. What this appears to be doing is actually just giving us different timings, which means that if we look at this, what actually is happening here is this is our button right here that we tagged into. So this runs up here, and as you can see, this is a wired mess, so I couldn't really tell. But it appears this is actually the button right here, and we're feeding these points through the capacitors, and all four of these points are the ones that are actually sending the signal to this button, meaning we should get another effect if we tag up here somewhere. So it looks like these may be our buttons right here. So that was a mistake on my part, um, just so this doesn't get super overly complicated, I'm not going to tag all four of the buttons with all four different, you know, styles of these switches that allow for different timings, but we are going to tag just one more just for fun. And for this, I'm going to be using a single throw double pull toggle switch. So what this is going to allow me to do is feed that signal in. So we're actually going to be doing the output right here. And we're going to be doing the two inputs, so both buttons are going to go, one's going to go on this side, the other's going to go on this side. So both of them are going to be on the outside, and then the stuff that's going to be connected to the capacitor is actually going to be right here, feeding in. So this is a little complex, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this exactly, and hopefully it'll make a little more sense. set up I'm gonna go ahead and try to explain this a tiny bit better so we have two separate points right here that are the buttons and these are running up to this and these are both the green wires so the two points are the green wires and this switch allows each track to go through so one track would be right here when it's flipped this way one track will be right here when it's flipped this way so we're just connecting these two points, just like a normal single throw single pole, except obviously there's two tracks and when it's flipped over, it just switches to that different track. Now the middle piece, the piece that connects to both tracks consistently is running to the capacitor. So we use the same capacitor and that just runs out into the switches. So what this is gonna allow us to do is pick which point we want to actually have inside of this loop system. So I'm going to press it. And then we flip it. So that's going to give us a different loop system that we're allowed to play with on a different button track. So pretty cool. But now I believe we are done with this. So we are going to go ahead and start mounting stuff and hopefully we have enough room.
Thank you.